Hello everyone. This is A. Pradab, Assistant Professor of English, St. Joseph's College of Arts and Science, Atanamas, Kadalu. Let me discuss the famous short story, A Rose for Emily, written by William Faulkner. William Faulkner, born in New Albany, Mississippi, on September 25, 1897. His family moved to Oxford, Mississippi, just before he was five. He belonged to a once wealthy family of farmer plantation owners. He was a high school dropout, but he nevertheless developed a passion for literature, originally planning to be a poet. Faulkner earned fame from a series of novels that explore the South's historical legacy. Let me see the short story briefly. The rose, a rose for a Emily is divided into five sections. In section 1, the narrator recalls the time of Emily Grierson's death and how the entire town attended her funeral in her home, which no stranger had entered for more than 10 years. In a once elegant, upscale neighborhood, Emily's house is the last vestige of the grandeur of last era. Colonel Satoris, the town's previous mayor, had suspended Emily's tax responsibilities to the town after her father's death, justifying the action by claiming that Mr. Grierson had once lent the community a significant sum. As new town leaders take over, they make unsuccessful attempts to get Emily to resume payments. When members of the board of aldermen pay her a visit in the dusty and antiquated parlor, Emily reasserts the fact that she is not required to pay taxes in Jefferson and that the officials should talk to a colonel Satoris about the matter. However, at that point, he has been dead for almost a decade. She asks her servant, Tobe, to show the men out. In section 2, the narrator describes a time 30 years earlier when Emily resists another official inquiry on behalf of the town leaders. When the town people detect a powerful order emanating from her property. Her father has just died and Emily has been abandoned by the man whom the townsfolk believed Emily was to marry. As complaints mount, Judge Stevens, the mayor at the time, decides to have lime sprinkled along the foundation of the Grierson home in the middle of the night. Within a couple of weeks, the order subsides but the townspeople begin to pity the increasingly reclusive Emily, remembering how her great aunt had succumbed to insanity. The townspeople have always believed that the Grierson's thought too highly of themselves, with Emily's father driving off the many suitors deemed not good enough to marry his daughter. With no offer of marriage in sight, Emily is still single by the time she turns 30. The day after Mr. Grierson's death, the women of the town call on Emily to offer their condolences. Meeting them at the door, Emily states that her father is not dead. A charade that she keeps up for three days she finally turns her father's body over for burial. In section 3, the narrator describes a long illness that Emily suffers after this incident. The summer after her father's death, the town contracts workers to pave the sidewalks and a construction company under the direction of northerner Homer Baran is awarded the job. Homer soon becomes a popular figure in town and is seen taking Emily on buggy rides on Sunday afternoons, which scandalizes the town and increases the condition and pity they have for Emily. They feel that she is forgetting her family pride 
and becoming involved with a man beneath her station as the affair continues and emily's reputation is further compromised she goes to the drug store to purchase arsenic a powerful poison she is required by law to reveal how she will use arsenic she offers no explanation and the package arrives at her house label for rats in section 4 the narrator describes the fear that some of the town people have that emily will use poison to kill herself her potential marriage to homer seems increasingly unlikely despite their continued sunday ritual the more outraged women of the town insist that the baptist minister talk with emily after his visit He never speaks of what happened and swears that he will never go back. So the minister's wife writes to Emily, the two cousins in Alabama, who arrive for an extended stay because Emily orders his silver toilet set monogrammed with the Homer's initials. Talk of the couple's marriage resumes. Homer absent from town is believed to preparing for Emily's move to the north or avoiding Emily's intrusive relatives after the cousin's departure Homer enters the Grierson home one evening and then is never seen again holed up in the house Emily grows plump and gray despite uh, the occasional lessons she gives in china painting her door remains closed to outsiders in what becomes an annual ritual emily refuses to acknowledge that the tax bill she eventually closes up the top floor of the house except for the occasional glimpse of her in the window nothing is heard from her until her death at age 74 only the servant is seen going in and out of the house in section 5 the narrator describes what happened after emily dies emily's body is laid out in the parlor and the women town elders and two cousins attend the service after some time has passed the door to a sealed upstairs room that had not been opened in 40 years is broken down by the town people The room is frozen in time with the items for an upcoming wedding and a man's suit laid out. Homer's parents body is stretched on the bed as well in an advanced state of decay. The onlookers they notice the indention of a head in the pillow besides Homer's body and a long strand of Emily's gray hair on the pillow. Miss Emily passes away and uh, the town people towns people discover one room they enter the bedroom that's been locked for 40 years only to find the rotting corpse of Homer Baron thank you everyone for watching this video and listening this video